Hi there, thanks for joining me for another video on my channel Ideas Box. My name's Jimmy and today we've got the second part of farm gate making. I hadn't actually planned on making this a two part video but as these things do they kind of evolve and change and I've found that I've had to make some minor changes to the way I'm making these gates and so I wanted to run through a few things about it. Please excuse my nasally voice but I've finally succumbed to COVID so I don't feel left out and neglected anymore, I feel like part of the team. But it hasn't been too bad so anyway let's get on with this video. In my last video I mentioned I was going to press them in my press and then press the other end of the pipe as well like that and then weld them and whilst it does look quite nice I don't think it really looks any better than the bird mouth and the weld so and given the amount of mucking around it took to get those two pressed end pipes parallel I don't know if I'll bother with that again it took me a lot longer than bird mouthing and welding anyway the reason for those welds on either end of that piece of pipe is because I was going to put mesh the full height of the gate so initially the gate was 1100 between that pipe there and that top pipe there but the piece of mesh I got you can see in the background is only 900 from the bottom to the top so that's why I've welded that piece there of pipe in so that's 900 from the center of that pipe to the center of that pipe and the reason I'm using that mesh is because it was virtually free. I got it off of Facebook Marketplace for $10 for two pieces that long. And given that the stuff I was going to get, I would have had to drive an hour and a half from here. And it was $40 something dollars a sheet, which is no big deal. The sheet would have done the job. One sheet would have done each gate. But this was five minutes up the road and it was, like I said, I got two pieces like that for $10. So I thought I'll weld a piece of pipe in there cross that top brace there and I'll just make that work. One thing you have to think about when you're making gates for a farm is that the mesh or whatever it is you're attaching to the gate goes on the inside so that it's pressing against the frame of the gate when the animals put any load on it so that you're not loading up those welds. All those welds are really doing is holding the mesh in place. When the animals press against it they're pressing against the gate structure as such. And what I've done with this one so far is I've done those welds along the bottom but as you can see the mesh I'm using is a little bit bowed but that's okay what you do is you tack it there and then there and then you heave that one across and tack that one and heave that one across and tack that one and then such and such all the way until you get to the other end so I'm not going to bother videoing that I'll just show it once it's done one thing you'll find when you use um, kind of oldish mesh that's been moved around a bit is you get those buckles in the wire and the best way I find to fix them up is just with a dead blow hammer. They've got steel granules inside them, steel like little tiny steel pellets and um, when you hit something it kind of the hammer doesn't bounce. So I find that they're the best things for straightening this mesh up. So you just kind of go along, just eyeball it. I decided I did like the way those pressed ends finish up so I had a go at doing another one and I've got an admission to make. I got those two pressed ends out of parallel so <laughs> I cut it, orientated the ends correctly and then welded it in the middle. Uh, I suppose the good thing with doing welding is that there's not often you do something that's uh, irretrievable. I've had to dub over this audio as it was raining while I was doing this and it was almost impossible to hear 
the few things that I was saying, plus it was just a horrible noise on the roof of the workshop. But basically what I do here is I'm heaving it across with the clamp and then you tack weld it wherever you think that it's lined up best. I went back to weld that one but realized there was a bit of a gap so I'll push that down uh, in a minute and weld that. So I'm moving up here now and next time I do this what I'll do is I'll put the clamp closer to the join in the mesh so it doesn't flex the cross mesh so much. Uh, it's, it does spring off here and if I was to do a lot of this, I'd make a special clamp with a double fork that would hook on the, the uh, vertical runner on the mesh and a curved jaw that would sit nicely on the pipe so that it doesn't try and slide off. But the amount that I'm doing for these gates, I probably won't bother. But So as you can see, I'm welded it here and um, it's going to be nice and straight once it's all done. And then as you move up, you you don't necessarily weld where the clamp exactly is at. Um, sometimes you have to weld one or two back and you've got to work your, work your way along and then work with the amount of tension that you've got on the mesh. But with this one here, I'm just going to give it a bit of a weld and then I'll um, take the clamp off because the clamp's got plastic jaws and I don't want to melt them too much. So there that's off and you can see the bends in the wire there which I'll sort out in a minute. So now I'm just giving them a bit of a belt with the, the dead blow hammer. Um, if you haven't got a dead blow hammer, I recommend you get one. They're really good for all sorts of things. You can hit things pretty hard, but not a solid steel on steel impact like a steel hammer. And they're fantastic for doing things like this, as you can see. One thing you'll find when you grind the galvanizing off water pipe to weld it is you get a build up of the galvanizing in your grinding wheels and I think the only way to really fix that is to really lean on it on a piece of steel and try and get all that the actual uh, carborundum out that the galv is melted into basically it melts into it so you can just hang off a piece of steel put something in your vise nice and thick and just grind away uh, I might have a quick go at that and I'll, we'll see how that goes Yep, all right, so that's worked pretty well. That's an old disc. You can see the fibers coming out, but it's got nearly all the galf off. So that's actually worked a little bit better than I thought it was going to. So that wheel's now good to use again. Before I hang the PA gate, I'm just going to tack weld a small piece of uh, mesh to that because uh, like I said, I'll make a decorative panel for that one, but I have, still haven't worked out what I'm going to do with that one yet. I've just about finished making these gates now. That's one of the longer ones. And over here, I've got the other long gate and the PA gate. I did find a use for that thin wall 
um, steel galve steel conduit and I've used it to make a top rail because it's much thinner wall and it's easier to press the ends and get them straight. I actually was able to press the wall of this one here in, the, uh, in my bench vise. Don't underestimate the power of a bench vise, they're very powerful. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that video and you learned something. If you're making, looking at making some gates, the, the last two videos I've made have helped you getting them to sit right and sit square and get the mesh to sit right. Sometimes using used mesh is more mucking around than it seems to be worth, but if you can get it for a good price, it's, it's usually worth the trouble. Make sure to click the like, subscribe and the notifications button and um, we'll check out the next video that comes along, which hopefully might be us getting the llamas. Okay, that's all for this video. Bye for now and take care.